In this video and the next video, we're going to have a look at how we can extract elements of dates from date time, date, date time offset, date time two, small date time and time. In the next video, we'll have a look at format, which is similar to the Excel function of the same name, but with some twists. In this video, we're going to have a look at five functions which are simpler than format to use. So we have got here a date time offset. And what we can do is extract the year very easily by saying select year. So if I do that, then we can see that the answer is 2007. We can do the same with the month. So that's the fourth month and the day, the third day. So year, month, day, very easy to use. Let's try and extract the hour. And you can see we start running into problems. There is no hour function. So what can we use? Well, we can use two different functions, but related date name and date part. So what date name and date part do is take two arguments. The first one being, what are you trying to retrieve? So in this particular case, we are trying to retrieve the hour. So we just say hour. Now notice we don't say hour in single quotation marks or anything like that. It does not accept strings. It's got to be like, as you see, hour without any quotation marks around it. Similarly, you can also use minutes, seconds, milliseconds, microseconds, nanoseconds. You can also use weekday, week, and day of year and quarter, in addition to using day, month, and year. So in other words, this is exactly the same as this, except there is one difference. Why do we have these two different functions? Well, the reason is because this returns a string, date name, returns a var chart, and this returns an int, a number. So you can imagine that for year and day, these will return exactly the same thing. But what about the month? Here, they do return something different because, because this is a string, date name, whereas date part returns a number. And so we can't have the string April as a number. So we return April and four. Now this is in the English language. That's because my computer is set up in English. So if my computer was set up in a different language, it would return that localized language. Now, in addition, we've also got day of year. So what this does is count January the 1st as the first day of the year and say, okay, what day number out of 365 or 366 are we doing? We also have week. Now this is a week number, so week number 14. Now the first day of the week is going to be by default a Sunday. So if you have a look at a 2007 calendar, we can see that the 1st of January was a Monday. So if I go all the way up to the 6th of January, it's still going to be in week one. However, if I change it to the 7th, we are now in week number two. Now we can change the first day of the week by saying set date first, that's one word, and giving it a number. So seven is a Sunday, so one is a Monday. So let's say I wanted the first day of the week to be a Thursday. So if I do that, then we will have the seventh again being in week two, but so will the sixth. That's also in week two, as is the fourth. It's only when we get to week one, the third of January, that is week one, and then we get to the fourth, and so that is now week two. So I'm just going to reset that. And by the way, you can find out what your current date first is by select at at date first. 
So if I change that now, we now have a date first being the default, which is Sunday. Two other differences with date name is the weekday. So weekday gives Wednesday as a string and four as a number. And we should know that that four has nothing to do with the set date at first. If we set date four, then that's actually a Thursday. So these two systems not quite talking to each other. By the way, date first, whilst it affects date name and date part, doesn't affect date diff. For date diff, the first day of the week is always going to be on a Sunday. Have a look at my date diff video for information on that. And in addition to weekday, we've also got the time zone offset, TZ offset. So the time zone offset for this particular thing, five hours, 10 minutes, a completely made up time zone. But you can see it gets interpreted correctly by date name as plus zero five colon one zero and as 310 minutes, that being the number of minutes in five hours and 10 seconds. Similarly, if I put this into the negative, we have both of these in the negative. So in this video, we've had a look at year, month, day, and date name, which returns a string, and date part, which returns an integer. In the next video, we'll have a look at using the format function with respect to dates to extract information. Thank you for joining me in this video. If you like it, then please click the like button. And why not subscribe and click the bell next to it so you'll be notified of any new videos. Thank you for watching this and keep learning.